Stitch in Heaven, and we're so excited to welcome you to the Schoolhouse Dash So Along, which starts today. We are super excited. Behind me is the Schoolhouse Dash. We will be doing one block a week for the next 12 weeks. For week number one, we're going to do something super simple. We're going to start with the basics. We're going to do a basic nine patch. You will find your pattern linked to this video. So pause it, pause me now and download it before we get started. Um, we're really excited to do this. We're going back to basics, back to fundamentals. Miss Mitzi Red will be walking you through it. Anita and I will be watching the Facebook feed. So if you have questions, please note them there and we will answer them as quickly as possible. Um, also, this pattern will be available just for the entirety of the sew along. After that, you can find the pattern at www.stitchinheaven.com. And without further ado, Miss Mitzi Red, enjoy. Okay, so block today that we're going to work on is going to be your traditional nine patch block. Now, there's a lot of variations of nine patches out there, but we're keeping it simple on this quilt for school hash dash. So let's take a look at what you're going to have. Um, of your Island Matique fabrics, you're going to have your parchment and your white. So you're actually doing two blocks of these for the quilt. And it's going to be on the top and the bottom layer of, of your quilt when you look at your pattern as far as where these, these blocks do piece into the quilt. Um, but with it itself, for each block, you're going to have five of the parchments and you're going to have four of the white. So very easy to do on this one and it's a great beginner block to start with. So you're going to come in and I like to speed things up and try to get it done done as fast as I can. If you've, if you've watched videos with me before, you know that I'm, I'm a fast quilter. So I'm going to lay everything out and I love the Martelli rotating mat because I'm able to lay everything out and get exactly where I need to be ahead of time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my white and my parchment together first and make sure your machine does have a good quarter inch foot on it. Thread wise I'm using is Aurifil thread. Love using Aurifil thread when I do quilts. And I've got my Aurifil on the top and on the bottom I'm using a coordinating color. I'm going with real light uh, creamy white color because it's going to match closely with my whites and I don't want my thread obviously showing through. So I'm putting my two layers together and then I'm just going to go ahead and chain piece these together. Now what chain piecing means is I'm going to go ahead and just keep feeding one hour after another after another through as much as I can without having to stop and cut threads. Now I'm going to set my machine to where it's going to lift my foot up next time so it's easier for me to slide the next layer under. So this time row, the second row of that nine patch will be the parchment on the white. And I'm just going to stitch that through. Be sure you've always got a brand new needle in there when you start your project. I switched mine out before we got started today. And so you've always got a fresh needle to work with. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache to go with it. And again, I'm using that perfect quarter inch seam. And I'm just going to go ahead and stitch down through. And so what I'm going to end up with here at the beginning, let me just cut my threads. And I'm going to have three of these. Now they're all still the parchment on the white, but they're going to lay out a little different. Now the nice thing about the Martelli rotating mats is they do have the iron board underneath that. So do remember, like if you've watched one of my videos before where I talk about with pressing, we're going to press to the dark side is the traditional way of doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my iron. I'm using a Lara Star iron on this. And I'm just right now I'm using heat. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a good press. And then I'm going to open it up and I'm just going to go over it a little bit. Now I do like steam. Okay, so you're going to hear a little bit of steam coming through. I'm going to put a little bit in there. Not too much. It doesn't take too much to get that those opened up and ready to go. Okay, make sure we're still staying nice and hot and we are. And so that's going to give my first with my parchment and white. Now again, I'm still going to do the same on every one of these pieces because it's all done very traditional, very easy on that. You notice that I'm going across. I'm not pressing. You know, I'm not. I'm not trying to put, like, I'm not trying to get wrinkles out of a shirt or a, you know, dress pants and like that. I'm giving a nice, just smooth glide just to get the heat into it, 
And again, if I feel like I need to use steam, I have no problem using steam. The key is you don't want to use that steam and really push because of course you can stretch your fabrics by doing that. And I like to give my seams, before I even lay that fabric back, I do give it a little bit of heat in there just to kind of set that seam first before I go ahead and do more with it. So let me go ahead and bring this back up. This is great because we can just sit here and go back and forth. So now what I've got, I've got my, most of my rows already made. Let me just flip those to go the right direction. There we go. And I've just got to add on this third piece. So we'll do that next. And it's exactly the same as we did the first time. So on the first row, one on top of the other, I'm putting the parchment on top of the white. Staying with that quarter inch seam all the way through. My machine allows my presser foot to go ahead and lift up just a slight bit so I can slide the next piece in. I want to make sure when it does that, we stay on that quarter inch seam the whole way through. You really want to focus on your consistency and keeping a really good quarter inch seam all the way. If you find that, you know, maybe you it jiggled a little bit, it went one direction or another, that's okay. You can always you know, if you have take out, take out your threads and reset your seam, you can always do that. I know it's not fun, none of us love to do it, but it's better to do that and be consistent than to finish your block and it be really off in size. Nobody wants that to happen. All right, let me trim these. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did, but now I've got the three, okay? So let me go over with the pressing again. So I'm gonna come in, give it a little bit of a press, and I'm just setting my seam right there before I lay this back open. I'm giving it a little bit more to go and press it. Nothing wrong with giving it a little bit of steam. Like I said, remember, I'm just giving it a little bit of steam. I'm not steaming and pressing out. I've got my, my hot iron sitting right on top of that seam when I go ahead and, and give it a little bit of the steam itself. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and make sure those are all in place. And I can give my steam from either side, doesn't matter. Those are my top and the bottom. I'm going to get my iron, that a little bit. And then I'm going to lay that over right there. Go ahead and give it just a little bit of steam in it. Doesn't need a lot. All right. And now there's the three parts that are gonna go with that nine patch. So it's really easy to put together from here. Now you've probably noticed up until this point, I haven't been using pins and I really don't use pins that often. If you feel more comfortable, please use pins. I, I have nothing against them because I'm using them now. And most commonly you're gonna find me using them when I'm getting to my larger pieces, and especially when I'm wanting to nest these seams together. So the important part of always pressing even to where, like for example, I'm always pressing to the dark side, is my seams then will line up one against the other. They'll, they'll just kind of butt right up against each other. So I can go ahead and pin that, and then when I get ready to stitch it, everything is lined up really nice and really clean. So I'm gonna do what would be the top to the middle now. Now remember, do not sew over your pins. Uh, it's tempting, and you know, there's times we may be a little distracted, but the last thing you wanna do is be starting this gorgeous quilt and have your needle possibly hit your pin, and it throws your timing off because that is a trip in for service to get that reset. So take your time, stop before you get to your pin, pull your pin out, and then continue on. Okay, so that is the top to the middle. And I'm actually gonna go ahead before I add my bottom on, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little press. I press a lot and I like doing it kind of step by step as best as I can. And because it saves me from having to do oh, what I consider too much pressing later to try to make up for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Now this one, we're gonna have that white center no matter which way we go, or you know, you're gonna have, have to where it's gonna show on the white. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press it that direction. Press it whichever way you like. 
You see all that steam come out? I love these Laura Star irons for their steam. Okay. All right, so I've got my top, my middle. Let's slide out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and pin for the bottom now. Same thing, I'm just nesting or butting those seams right up against each other. So super simple to do and easy. And your pin, I'm gonna slide right into my seams. So it really helps to hold that nice and tight together. And we don't have any movement once we get ready to sew that into place. Okay. Now you may or may not notice I did not backstitch at the beginning of my block. That's kind of a personal choice. It's gonna get stitched into so many things later. I'm not too worried about it coming undone. And if it did, when I'm getting ready to stitch my rows together, I can always go and add a couple extra stitches back in there, no problem. But, and two, I'm, you know, we may end up having to, to trim or not trim when it comes because we wanna make sure all of our blocks are, blocks are squared up. So, you know, it is possible I would trim off maybe a stitch or two, depending on the block and how it's all lined up. So I'm not too worried about putting in those extra back tack or locking stitches right there anyway. Okay, so last piece to press for this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply a little bit of heat right there, I'm gonna set my seams. Next up, I'm just gonna lay it over just like that. Give it just a little bit of seam, steam in the seams. Try saying that over and over, right? There we go. All right, so let me show you here. And once you've done that, you have completed your nine patch. So we have the parchment in your corners and in the middle. So you've got five pieces for the parchment, one or four pieces for the white, and you actually make two of these. So, I mean, look at that, that was quick. That was no time at all, and you've already got it done. So make your next one, and you're all done with the nine patch. Stay tuned, because we'll have another block coming to you soon.